go ahead a very good afternoon all again i welcome you all for the another live session this is dietitian flora amrita over here today i'm going to talk about everything about the thyroid so nowadays and and india has in the world we have been suffering we have been seeing like much more of thyroid issues like we have been almost 80 i mean almost 60 to 80% of the women who have been hearing about the thyroid issues okay so it's a condition where we can see the thyroid gland either it might be the two or a two or low or a two high amount of thyroid hormone okay it's nothing but a thyroid diseases where it might be a lower in the site where it might be the hormone production would be the lesser in the site so the thyroid hormones have the role in the many functions of the body if we have like uh, it might be the two or it might be the low so if we have the such in the functions of that uh, we can make it as the causes it might be also where with the heart rate the body temperature and all the aspects of the metabolism as we have been seeing in the slide so we it is the most prevalent as as i was talking about mostly it is seen in the women country so it is the gland where it is uh, that if we see into the structure of this the thyroid gland is a butterfly shaped organ where it contains of the two lobes okay one is to the left and one is to the right as we are into seeing to the inter picture so each of them it might be a centimeters around the 5 centimeters long or around the 3 centimeters width so it might be the usually in the women it has been compared more with the men and we can see from all the ages and also being to the woman as well as to the woman so uh, it has thyroid gland it is covered with the shield as well so into the disease where we can look into the there are two types of thyroid diseases where they are as uh, we have been hearing from the such a long time like it, it can be a hypothyroidism as well as the hypothyroidism so first we look into the hypothyroidism it is nothing but a disorder it is uh, where the it is like an autoimmune diseases where it is a disorder which can thyroid gland does not produce enough thyroid hormone okay which cannot produce uh, enough thyroid production the hormone of the uh, hormones what it is required to the body which is which has does not provide a proper thyroid hormones it can be a causes of the poor ability to tolerate the cold and uh, cough as well as it might be a uh, fatigue uh, it, the main cause is weight gain a uh, depression okay and uh, slower heart rate the constipation everything it will be we see to the symptoms these are the symptoms where the hypothyroidism which does not produce enough of the thyroid hormones so occasionally it has been seen in the form of in the in your the neck it is due to the goiter so next we we see to the other type of the thyroid diseases it's nothing but the hypothyroidism the hypothyroidism is a condition that and also causes the excess of production of the thyroid hormones by the thyroid gland see there is at all no production at all as well as the, there is a excess of production so there is a difference between the hypo and the hypo so the signs and symptoms of these hypothyroidism the same the sleeping problems again the fast the heartbeat just exactly opposite to the hypothyroidism as we have been the weight gain and we have seen here the weight loss okay so the enlargement of the thyroid gland and uh, it might be the diarrhea it might be the heart intolerance the part of uh, uh, fastest heartbeat as the sleep problems has been fatigue uh, muscle weakness irritability and um, many other causes also being seen in this hypothyroidism so uh, the main causes it might the, there is a less production as well as the excessive production where we have to uh, know that today like what is the main cause of this the production of the hormone where we need to know that how the thyroid hormones will get produced so the uh, hashinston is diseases it's nothing but the autoimmune diseases okay so the autoimmune diseases which can affect the body cells uh, can damage the thyroid glands okay there, there is nothing but the autoimmune diseases and the excess of iodine deficiency i mean the iodine deficiency also is uh, to be known where uh, 
in the body, if you have the iodine deficiency, that can also be cause of the hypothyroidism, the over response of the hypothyroidism treatment. And if we see into that, the radiation therapy is there, then thyroid surgery can be done. The medication is the number one priority where we have to look into and the vegetative disorder and the pregnancy. So it can cause not only uh, in a right from a small age group, but also we have the from a born baby as well as to the geriatrics. I is this from from a, it is not the age like any age can also be developed by the thyroidism. It is an autoimmune disease or the and the mainly special we have to know that it is not a particular age as now almost 80 percent of the women as well as even men has been suffering with this hypothyroidism or hyperthyroidism. So as mainly we have to look into like what to include, okay. So many of the clients who have been, many of the patients who have come to me and number one question is like every day morning we are being, we have to take a thyroid tablet. Back. So the, what are the foods to be avoided and what are the foods to be taken? That is the number one where we are looking into the, as per the dietitian, we are, you will have to know about it. So we have to include like foods which are mainly uh, contains the iodine foods, the selenium foods and the zinc. We have to include it in, in our daily basis like where you can add it about see uh, like what kind of a thyroidism are you into. Okay. According to the uh, test, you have to know about the test. Okay. Uh, so we have to know like uh, foods which are which we have to consume where you can get a, enough amount of the iodine selenium and the zinc where you can include in our uh, plant-based sources where the food where we get from so it, you have to the iodine rich foods contains like cheese milk like iodized table salts and whole eggs can be included uh, with the, which are rich source of the iodine and the selenium contains like raisin nuts beef and the turkey chicken eggs like non-veg and the brown rice oatmeal which also uh, helps to increase the selenium content and so also the zinc is also most important so where you get in mostly nuts the seeds where nowadays we have been um, telling to have a lot of uh, zinc and magnesium the selenium which has been most present in the seeds and nuts where we have to legumes the yogurt and they are Oils and the non veg oils you can include it. As we are looking to the picture as well, as everything says that all right from the uh, milk, the cheese, the non veg, all the plant based and animal based, uh, the sources where we have to include in our daily basis, which are more uh, in high in the number of iodine, the selenium and the zinc is the number one priority where you have to include it daily. So, foods to be avoided mainly. Uh, for the hypothyroidism so the goitrogenic foods uh, goitrogens are the compounds that affect the thyroid functions in the person which consume for the law uh, large amount see uh, mostly as we visit to the doctor firstly the doctor tells to simply avoid the like, cabbage cauliflower or soya products or the spinach which has to be the more uh, the dietogenic foods okay that can affect your thyroid that is what how we tell you to, to avoid the dietogenic foods which are specially present in the cabbage cauliflower broccoli all the cruciferous uh, vegetables where you need to be avoided uh, as well as soya products either it might be the tofu the soya milk the soja, soya chunks has also the dietary uh, comp compounds where it's triggers okay where the medication gets triggers to absorb it where it you would not get a proper uh, amount of the uh, thyroid glands to be produced so that is why it inhibits it too that is why we need to uh, make a note of to be uh, the foods to be avoided when you are into the medication and proper uh, according to the values what we are you have it okay and the process report as uh, as everywhere the dietitians or the doctors tell you to avoid the first one is to avoid the processed food and it might be the fast food, it might be the cakes, the sodas, the zero calories which we are getting into the artificial sugars, it might be the unnecessary nutrients you are taking into the proper nutrients where you have to be be on a check like what kind of nutrients you need to be taken on. So the, the processed foods and the, the, the complete air crash diet and, and everything is nothing but a crash diet where you have to be crashed out. So this is how where the foods should be avoided. Um, so, high sugars, high fat, the, uh, 
I mean, the processed foods where you have to be avoided as well. So that is what where I was talking about the hypothyroidism. Now let me talk about the um, hypothyroidism where again, um, where it is completely opposite where I was talking about in the previous slide, it is like sleep low iodine foods yeah where they are you have to include a proper iodine foods here you need to include a low iodine foods where you have to go with not iodized foods okay where in this uh hyperthyroidism where you have been so many uh completely opposite symptoms uh, properly opposite the causes where we have been seen so that is why in the dietary instruction also as well where you have to go into the opposite direction as well so where where in the hypothyroidism where you have to include iodine uh, they might be selenium and zinc okay where now you have to contain a low content of iodine foods okay non-iodized stores salts may they be egg whites tea coffees where you have to go with the sugars might be the jellies and artificial sugars the i mean the alcohol the fruits and fruit juices it is the number one where it is low iodines uh, foods which are has to be included okay and the cruciferous vegetables where you can include in this hypothyroidism where the sprouts might be the the cabbage the cauliflower broccoli and all where you can include happily in the hypothyroidism okay not in the hypothyroidism the food containing the selenium as well where you can be included the foods containing the iron as well you can include it in your daily foods and uh, to be avoided for the hypothyroidism is like iodine bridge foods see again i was talking about where you have to be again it's coming to the avoided where you have to avoid iodine iodine rich foods okay dairy products the egg yolk the iodine supplements again the soya products the caffeine and all where you have to in avoid it for the hypothyroidism okay and the test to be done for the hypothyroidism function is like as as we, when you visit to the doctor these are the tests these are the normal ranges where you have to know about it i mean the t3 is that is 100 to 200 ng by dl and t4 is like uh, 4.6 to 12 okay and ths is like 0 0.4 to 4 so everything we see around the th uh, thyroid stimulating hormone is the ratio where we count around so we according to the ratios we have to know that which kind of category into the hyper or hyper so uh, as everybody has the myths and myths like it's a number one myth like if you have a thyroid uh, problem you will be de developing a void or enlarge the gland uh, so the major uh, the majority of the people with the thyroid disease do not develop a goiter around your neck which is seen in your neck uh, side so it is most of the uh, patient doesn't people or uh, does not form or uh, develop a goiter but few of almost 30 percent to 40 percent can form a uh, develop a goiter as well uh, so myths about the second myth is about the thyroid is only a middle age or old age woman have a thyroid problem see both as i was talking about not only men uh, not only women but both men and women can cause develop a thyroid condition at any age okay at any age we have been seeing this uh, thyroid uh, above 60 or below 60 it have been seen nowadays the thyroid disease can be affect your fertility in the pregnancy or after your delivery as well we have been seeing okay but mostly in the fertility cases mostly in the pregnancy your thyroid levels might uh, raise up high so that is why we have to put you on some medication okay so that is how your hormonal imbalance would would happen there so that is why we have to put you on to the medication where you can be uh, like uh, controlled to the medication by a proper food as well as a proper medication that should be continued in your daily basis so this is how not only a particular age not only a particular uh, person has this thyroid problem but anybody anyone can affect the thyroid so that is how where you have to uh, know that what is it is to be managed and it is how you have to maintain the thyroid so it is um, everybody has a question like how to manage the thyroid right uh, so it is manageable and through a very good lifestyle as well as healthy diet see how you are you have to know are so what kind of uh, changes you have to do is that is the most number one uh, priority where you have to look 
what kind of a lifestyles you are being around are you feeling lazy or you doesn't walk at all you're sitting everybody nowadays we are into a sedentary life we have been sitting for the longer time there is no physical activity at all there is no proper diet uh, online zomatos and all i've been sitting and ordering and we're eating much so we are nowadays being into a sedentary life yes so that is how you you need to know that for the body we need to go with a proper a lifestyle changes should be made that is how it is to be maintained by number one is like lifestyle modification is number one and a proper healthy diet that is number two so the role the next is like i uh, to manage the thyroid i can tell you is the role of iodine see okay we need a dietary iodine to synthesize the thyroid hormones yes if we have a iron deficiency in the body you will produce a low low levels of t4 okay so where how iodine has been used every day that can be included iodine is rich in as well as i mean the fish i mean the salt where you can use it not uh, any kind of preservatives not okay the iodine is also been excessively used in a kind of pickles and all it's not the preservatives where you have to with good amount of uh, salt which the healthy way you have to have the normal i mean 5 grams per day we can have include the iodized salt where you can include it so the role of glycogenic foods as i was talking about many have been listening to that like can we have a cabbage cauliflower my doctor has advised not to take a cabbage cauliflower spinach um like all the fruits and as vegetables not to be consume in the whenever you have a thyroid kind of when you are into medication see uh, yes i was talking about in the previous the slide like it can hinder the production of thyroid hormones yes but it can be taken the limitation okay always the limitation is the number one uh, so you can be taken in the form of cooked way not in our, they are inactive in cooking so that is how we have to not to have in a direct way but you can cook it and you can have it in a uh, limit form but not you know, when you're taking like every day cabbage cauliflower spinach if you're taking in that way so that is not advised but when you're into a taking weekly once twice a cabbage or cauliflower once in a week or twice in a month that can be advisable in the cooked form okay so yes you can happily have a cabbage cauliflower but not in a every day basis but in, into a limitation where you need to know about it okay uh, so yes you can also include the dietogenic food the cruciferous vegetables and uh, good amount of iodine but uh, as well as good lifestyle and healthy uh, diet is number one and other one is healing gut see uh, gut is a number one where the studies have shown that low thyroid hormones can lead to the leaky gut and the poor heart, gut health so you have to suppress the thyroid function where you have to make uh, your gut healthier where you have to good uh, take about good amount of fiber rich foods as well as you have to hydrate yourself well as well as you need to good uh, have a good amount of probiotic foods where you, you know, that makes you healthier okay so always uh, choose the probiotic foods it might be the fermented foods the idli batter dosa and curd yogurt also can be included and good amount of what i mean the water hydrate yourself well and good amount of fiber rich foods okay this is how your bowel movements and the gut uh, process will be uh, good so where you all the studies uh, has been shown that the thyroid hormones have a low uh, where you need to have good amount of thyroid functioning as well as i was talking about the selenium as well in the previous slide the selenium rich foods the minerals where the thyroid hormone production okay the thyroid production that uh, thyroid from the damage cause the oxidative stress the selenium is the main mineral which can cause and protect from the uh, oxidative stress okay so always uh, make sure you have selenium rich foods and uh, which which is um, available and in, in your i mean uh, meat products and the fish and uh, and few nuts can be available uh, these are the sources where you get the selenium there and uh, the thyroid contains high amount of selenium okay and can deficiency can lead to the the thyroid dysfunction as well so make sure you have a selenium and keep your gut healthy so that it can be helpful for you
can it be uh, be reverse okay uh, your medication yes uh, medication is number one uh, where you have to take it every day and few people will be having a query like uh, we need to take a med uh, medication daily okay once into the control but still still your value is into the control but still you need to uh, continue your medication or what yes you need to uh, uh, take it into the uh, according to your levels your doctor has been has to decide like what uh, how much mg are you have to consume it okay but every day uh, you need to uh, take your supplement i mean the uh, thyroid medication where it can be in a control the production and the um, the thyroid hormones which has to be maintained so that is if you don't uh, take any medication you might uh, raise up like a rocket your levels might break it, raise up your like it skyrocket so you need to number one is like medication where you have to uh, be um, consult a doctor and it has to be advised and it should be uh, taken it every day where your thyroid hormone production will be like a good control by making a lifestyle changes yes a uh, good proper physical activity where it really helps you like whether it might be the weight loss which really helps you in the thyroid in the production of the thyroid yes where you have to make the you might feel in the when we have been seeing such a uh, cause and symptoms there you might feel uh, uh, fatigue you might be feel lazy in there over there so number one issue is like uh, a medication and proper lifestyle changes is where you can reverse back with the normal thyroid functioning okay the combination of healthy diet good workout and sleep yes these are the three main important things where you have to follow it every day like proper food Well, proper diet. I mean, the proper healthy diet, proper um, good physical activity, and good amount of sleep. Okay, eight hours of sleep, good hydration, and a good balanced diet, and uh, good and uh, changes in your um, lifestyle changes. That is the good uh, where you can maintain and balance your thyroid levels, which is the more important. Which you can uh, suspect all the autoimmune diseases where it is most helpful by. maintain by yourself by maintaining by yourself that can be um, be in a control where you cannot either uh, not cause with hyper and hypothyroidism as well so this is how has we have been talking about uh, the thyroid where you have to know like uh, and you have to know like what the main priority is the good lifestyle changes is number one and other one is a proper medication and a good sleep and good amount of balanced diet where you get good amount of selenium iodine iodine and the, all these are the where you have to include and to be avoided as well where we have been seen so this is how uh, we are been seen today and if you have any queries let me know what is the main cause of the thyroid problem a uh, main cause that is how i have been uh, talking about it might be uh, the thyroid uh, i mean the functioning the proper uh, uh, production the, there is no proper thyroid production in the hormones that is how the cause it might be the problems it might be the cause whether we have to know through the it, it is the hypo and the hypothyroidism first we have to know about it according to that as well we have to know that uh, what kind of a thyroid are you are into which category into you are if you are hypothyroidism if you are uh, seeing the symptoms of weight gain uh, loss of hair and a dryness in your um, skin and uh, pigmentation i mean uh, completely hormonal changes would cause there i mean if you see in the opposite direction the hypothyroidism where you will feel fatigue as well as weight loss uh, weight loss would happen so this is how uh, thyroid problems can you can face through it is a thyroid problem serious uh, yes it is a serious uh, problem as well we have to know about it because uh, 
um, there are so many signs and symptoms where we have been seeing in these uh, slides over there. And uh, you, first of all, you need to know like which category into, and you need to take a proper medication uh, so that it can be reversed and you can maintain through the diet and the proper medication. Right, it is uh, you can maintain through that. Next query. What is the problem if we have a thyroid? As uh, problems is like as like fatigue, uh, weakness, uh, weight gain, weight loss, and uh, no proper sleep. Uh, these are all the signs of I mean the hair loss, the pigmentation, all the hormonal imbalances where you have been seeing. You have to know it. Uh, these are the problems where you'll be seeing in if you have a thyroid. Next query. What food is good for the thyroid? Uh, see, I just I was talking about into the category as well. A good amount of thyroid food, selenium, zinc, iodine, all these the foods, a good proper balanced diet. According to your category, it is like hypothyroidism or the hypothyroidism, where uh, foods to be in opposite direction, where few foods to be avoided in the hyper and few foods to be uh, included in the hypo. So uh, according to your category, where you have to consult your doctor as well as dietitian, where she can help you out, or the foods, uh, I mean, complete details where she can guide you through the foods to be avoided and foods to be included according to your thyroid levels as well. How do I keep, uh, keep my thyroid healthy? By pro yes, uh, this is a good question again. Uh, you can keep your thyroid healthy by maintaining a good and a healthy uh, lifestyle changes as well as a good uh, balanced diet. A good food and a good physical activity is number one where you can uh, maintain your thyroid healthy. Thank you for joining uh, a live session here uh, and uh, bye and uh, till we meet uh, next time and meet you, see you, see you back into uh, by another topic. Thank you.